back after it again you guys welcome back um still going through books i've already read in the past and um i don't think i've read this book by jocko willink since maybe around 2020 and 20 2015 was when i really started to pick up on some of the terms personal development um, habits and of course I had an understanding of some of these things before and I was about 26 at the time but this is when I really started to see as the internet kept growing um, other personalities other people successful people start to talk about personal development and discipline and it wasn't really until I discovered Jocko Willink probably about 2019, actually 2018, I remember, because I went to his gym in uh, San Diego. I, 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 first time I saw him, he was on a podcast with Joe Rogan, his first podcast with Joe Rogan before he started the Jocko podcast. And um, I realized it was just down the street from my apartment at the time, so I went and signed up for, only lasted a couple of weeks at um, Victory MMA. And, um, why did I leave the first time? I think I just couldn't afford to stay the first time. It wasn't extremely expensive there, but I was struggling to get by and, uh, kind of keep up my membership. I went by, I went back a couple years later in 2021. And, um, what happened was I seemed to have cracked a rib, stayed out for only five or six weeks, went back in and, um, then I had a guy get me in an arm bar and pop my elbow, which only turned out to be what the doctor described. That was like a tendonitis, like a tennis elbow type of a thing. Really wasn't that big of a deal. Although it felt really weird to me because it felt like it was hyperextending and popping. And of course, couldn't keep up with the payment on the membership again. Whole lot of excuses. Um, on the topic of jujitsu, when I met Jocko the first day I went in there in 2018, I, I, said, hey, I found you on the podcast. And um, I wanted to build that part of my life, the the ability, uh, martial arts ability, and especially a good place to start into, which is low impact, jujitsu. So challenge myself. Imagine if I would have kept, kept on it back then, I would have been like six years in or something, seven years in by now. Would have made it pretty far. So that's it's a lesson in how quick um, the time goes by and what could have been but i ain't gonna dwell on that i look forward to pushing myself you guys can hold me accountable here on this channel to get back in to um a gym and start rolling around again so but when i picked up his books i got discipline equals freedom first we've done a review on that dichotomy of leadership i think i already did a review on that too we did a review on um Leadership strategy and tactics. I have not got the expanded edition on that yet, or the second edition. We'll, we'll pick that up just as far as I'd like to see what else he's written. All of his books are a great big leadership course. It really helped build a vocabulary for me. Um, and, you know, it's funny. I started first with Jocko Willink, 2018, 2019 paying attention to a uh, highly respectable man. And in my opinion, even on some of these guys I've, I've got on their backs over the years, just going through all the 9-11 stuff I talk about, maybe even naively, you know, I'm trying to recognize that too and figure out, you know, what the best, uh, most wisest decision is to move forward with that. That being said, they're, they're the model American man for me. They're a man's man. Um, these guys will get up and take it to the ultimate uh and get on the battlefield for the people around them and that's that's to be respected um especially when they take it that far you, it, tim kennedy jocko willing can you know thousands more they they do a lot more they help their communities they get on the mat and um they keep themselves well-rounded and they behave like warriors that's something i take accountability of myself i want to build more into my schedule to behave more like a man and a warrior myself, I'm not doing enough. Um, 
can see for myself, even just this past year, just getting the, enough square meals in every day and doing the basic weightlifting and muscle activation is something I've struggled to just keep up on. So I'll admit my workouts are easy. It's bodybuilding based. I, I really enjoy it. They don't really beat the crap out of me and I'm able to build a physique that looks really good and athletic. But how good can you use it? How good can you use it when it matters? And so the more discipline that, that I become and that I'll share right here with you openly and transparently on this channel, the more free I can become. Um, let's see. Oh, what I was going to say was, is, you know, unfortunately, and I guess, you know, maybe just something pulled through for a reason, but by 2022 in September, I discovered Wes Watson. And embarrassingly enough, but openly, I, you know, I went through this whole Wes Watson phase and that was right over the cusp of where this guy started to really lose his mind and turn into what he's turned into now, if you know who he is. It's just really just completely unhinged. I'm glad I really, um, you know, talked about what I experienced in January earlier this year about breaking ties with that guy. And I, and I still, I keep an eye on some of his stuff to this day and realize, you know, listening to somebody like that talk about who's respectable, who's a stud, um that's really it's just a guy who's fully depends on appearance appearance of his vehicles the appearance of his home the appearance of his body the appearance of whoever he's dating and um i can't help but think and i knew all along you know before i was like ah you know but you're there's other guys that are doing it a hell of a lot more respectable and being real studs a lot more than this guy is i'm listening to what he says followed him for a little while he did his program did one of the mansion masterminds Eventually, there's too many red flags that went by that this guy is not who he says he is. And um, it's just an easy comparison to see who the real men are. Um, you know, to Watson's little credit, and if it goes back far enough to where the guy really lied about his prison stuff, then that's even more terrible. He had he had a lot of good qualities, and he's... Um, He's an intelligent guy, but he's really pulling himself down to his own to his own downfall. He's tearing himself apart, probably because there's some areas in in himself and his character that are just lacking so bad. Instead of taking ownership of it, uh, he's just kind of self-destructing. Um, so, but now you know I've come around full circle, and so many things went by to say, hey, who should who should we really be looking up to? What are those guys doing? And Jocko Willink is definitely definitely one of those men um and to be open here too as what as well as i've talked about some in the past but my my opinions are evolving um we'll articulate that more in the future even as i continue with the where did the towers go book you know i could start getting into politics or 9-11 with these guys but really um It's kind of hard to do to expect to know why these guys may not talk about that stuff and to really really judge them for it um, I mean it's noted but it doesn't it really can't take that much away from what these guys are doing on a day-to-day -day basis some of them are involved in um, and I'm sure Jocko donates and helps in so many different places beyond the business that he runs echelon front and we'll get closer to this book in a minute but I want to talk about some of the history behind this and where my mindset uh, is on the subject on this person um, they're doing a lot of good in the world every day sharing a lot of good messages um, all of my other Jocko Willink videos I totally showed off all the books that I have you can check on some of those I didn't want to get them all down and do it again this time we're just gonna go over the discipline equals freedom uh, which is right here I don't know if I've even shown it to the camera yet well, let's get our pretty simple this is where the thumbnails come from Simple screenshot. Discipline equals freedom. Field manual by Jocko Willink. Pretty cool book. I mean, this the texture, the black texture here, the all black pages. Super dope. But what I was saying is, is these are respectable men, you know. And comparing it to like Wes Watson, the guy talks a lot of shit every day, to a point where you know. 
These type of guys will laugh at somebody like that. And probably they don't even take the time to even hear the echo of what guys like Wes Watson are saying to even take the time to laugh, probably. Um, these are real hard men. And the people that Jocko associates with, the people in his gym. And then I've seen, uh, you know, just other people develop at Victory MMA. Um, it's his name, Nathan. He calls himself Snake the Nate. And he's going to be uh, continuing in his um, professional fighting career, which is really cool. I'm a big fan of this guy. He's probably right about my, about my age. He's a father, just got engaged. And, um, shit, I think he's a black belt jujitsu and he's teaching a bunch of the classes at victory, uh, to this day. Um, really cool dude. And I can just imagine the endless amount of people there that, that are worked together that are just, um, real dangerous men, but good men. And, and a lot of the time, not always, but a lot of the times people who are actually fierce, dangerous killers, you know, they're the kindest, kindest, calmest, um, most secure people in the world in the world uh what's you know what's going around right now a lot of you have probably seen is that it's a stadium you know one fella's on this on the uh in the walkway on the staircase yelling at the at the guy underneath him um the guy yelling and losing his mind happens to be black and the other guy, I don't know what he is, kind of, uh, I'm not sure what the guy is. It's some other type of ethnicity. It doesn't matter what color their skin is, but it, just to identify the video that I'm talking about, if any of you watching this will realize what video that is. Um, you know, the guy was even below him on the staircase and just kind of smiling back at him, kept pretty calm, did the right thing and walked away from the altercation. And it comes out, you know, it's going viral right now that you never know who you're talking to. Um, who you could be threatening, um, getting in the face of, you never know who it is. Even just, even in back and forth in comments on the internet, you know, there's times where I was too opinionated, too passionate about comments on the internet, uh, where I came across some people where I didn't know who I was talking to and I backed off of it. You never know who it is. You know, you never, it's, that's why it's wise to just, uh, and I always try to put myself in check more and more over time, be more mature about things. Don't get so passionate about some keyboard warrior comments you know I've honestly I've been guilty of it and I'm always trying to check myself and grow and just I want to be someone who's um, an asset to the best of the best in this world so yeah it turns out that guy uh, was, was a professional fighter and a dangerous dude so it's a lesson um, what's another one that's going viral right now the Jeff Nippard and Mike Van Wick uh, thing um, big old bully dude not really a respectable personality actually i had got into it with him in comments back in 2022 myself and got blocked from the guy it was unnecessary for me but you know total you know asshole bullying on this this other dude at the gym who's a really successful bodybuilder um i don't want to be on the wrong side of that stuff uh, as well i've learned from jocko and taking ownership and being disciplined is hey take take ownership of your mistakes and figure out how to fix them. I don't want to be on the wrong side of history or the wrong side of good men. So try to check myself all the time. Hey, re-improve that. Go back and fix that. Don't behave like that anymore. Watch how you talk to people. Even if you're right, even if you think you're right, watch how you talk to people. Keep it respectable. You know, don't speak so much when it's unnecessary. Those are things that I'm working on myself. It's important to me. Um, Anyway, so I got this book. I read through the whole thing right away. I'm pretty sure it was right around 2020. Um, sick book. And really what it is, is it, I, it's one of those, but I never bring it up because I, I got so many, a few other ones that I use. I just open them up on any day and get a great lesson out of it. Probably take a picture of whatever the message is. His typically run across both pages, sometimes maybe three or so in here. It's just a short message for the day. You can open it up wherever and read something, you know, the war path. And some of the, a lot of these are, short youtube videos or clips from his podcast where you hear this stuff or um the famous one good video that he's got and actually you know what that came out as uh, here it is right here one of the most famous ones that you know that he that he recites um his own words this one's three pages that uh, when my second daughter was born january 3rd 2020 um my wife 
she actually asked me to play the Jocko good YouTube video so she could listen to it while she was giving birth. That's the truth. Uh, she liked it. I was cool with it, you know, especially, by the way, a tip for, you know, when you're going helping your wife, mother of your children, give birth. Um, let them run the show and just be there for support. So, um, I am, I'm going to read just this one out of here. If you hadn't heard it, this is new to you or subscriber to my channel and getting into reading, you haven't heard of any of this. Let's read this one and maybe we'll pick one more. I don't want to read a bunch out of his book and, you know, disrespect his copyright, but, um, then we'll just mention a few more things and, uh, close this video out. How do I deal with setbacks, failures, delays, defeats, or other disasters? I actually have a very simple way of dealing with these situations. Summed up in one word, good. This is something that one of my direct subordinates, one of the guys who worked for me, a guy who became one of my most, or one of my best friends, pointed out. He would pull me aside with some major problem or some issue that was going on, and he'd say, boss, We've got this thing, this situation, and it's going terribly wrong. I would look at him and I'd say, good. And finally, one day he was telling me about something that was going off the rails. And as soon as he finished explaining it to me, he said, I already know what you're going to say. And I asked, what am I going to say? He said, you're going to say good. He continued, that's what you always say. When something is wrong or going bad, you just look at me and say, good. And I said, well, I mean it because that is how I operate. So I explained to him that when things are going bad, there's going to be some good that will come from it. Oh, mission got canceled. Good. We can focus on another one. Didn't get the new high speed gear we wanted. Good. We can keep it simple. Didn't get promoted. Good. More time to get better. Didn't get funded. Good. We own more of the company. Didn't get the job you wanted? Good. Go out, gain more experience, and build a better resume. Got injured? Good. Needed a break from training. Got tapped out? Good. It's better to get tapped out in training. It's better to tap out in training than to tap out on the street. Got beat? Good. We learned. Unexpected problems? Good. We have the opportunity to figure out a solution. That's it. When things are going bad, don't get all bummed out. Don't get startled. Don't get frustrated. No. Just look at the issue and say, good. Now, I don't mean to say something trite. I'm not trying to sound like Mr. Smiley positive guy. That guy ignores the hard truth. That guy thinks a positive attitude will solve problems. It won't. But neither will dwelling on the problem. No. Accept reality but focus on the solution. Take that issue, take that setback. I just got cut off a bit. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Take that issue, take that setback, take that problem and turn it into something good. Go forward. And if you are part of a team, that attitude will spread throughout. Finally, if you can say the word good, then guess what? It means you're still alive. It means you're still breathing. And if you're still breathing, that means you've still got some fight left in you. So get up, dust off, reload, recalibrate, re-engage, and go out on the attack. Epic. Epic by Jocko Willink right there. I can tell I even, I, I hear, I've heard it a million times, there's voice in my head. I can even read through some of the, or pass through some of the words there almost just by memory. So... It's an amazing book. This whole entire book is filled with gems like that. I remember I had a buddy of mine who had um, someone very close to him pass away. And I hadn't been around the buddy for years. I wanted to do something to, to show that I cared, to try and be there. And I went by to visit and um, I got him an extra copy of this book. Um gave it to him as a gift so hopefully that made some difference for him because there is a page in here on death um, among so many other things you can just imagine if you've never heard any of it before and you heard what I just read there from Jocko Willink uh, it means a lot and so I want to just maybe pick one more we'll see what comes up but then in the back of the book 
is, let's see. Actually, let me just hit that table of contents so it's explained well. If you haven't seen his Instagram and stuff that he shares, basically this every day, every morning. He's up around 4.30 and maybe a little bit earlier. Um, setting the example. So in the book, it says we got part one. Um, seems to be a bit of an introduction. Uh, thoughts, it says. The way of discipline. So then that goes yeah, all the way into part two. Actions. Oh, I see here. Um, part one, thoughts. Part two, actions, all the way to page 91. Then we have fuel, feeding the machine, repair and maintenance, injury, prevention and recovery, and the appendix, which is the workouts, and it's full of workouts. So if you want a workout, you want a training regimen, you want something from Jocko Welling, he provided it right here. Um, some tough workouts too, and I mean, it goes from like beginner, intermediate to advanced. Let's see. How about this? This is pretty fitting. We'll read where does discipline come from, uh, and then we'll wrap this video up. Where does discipline come from? This is a simple answer. Discipline comes from within. Discipline is an internal force. Sure, you can have discipline imposed on you by a person like a drill instructor or that self-help guru on TV, but the reality is he won't give you real discipline because that external discipline is not strong. It will not survive. It cannot stand on its own. What you are looking for, what you need is self-discipline. Self-discipline, as the very term implies, comes from the self, you. It comes when you make a decision to be disciplined, when you make a decision to be better, when you make a decision to do more, to be more, self-discipline comes when you decide to make a mark on the world. If you don't think you are disciplined, it is because you haven't decided to be disciplined yet. It is because you haven't created it yet. You haven't become it yet. So where does it come from? It comes from you. So make the decision, make the commitment, become the discipline, embrace its cold and relentless power, and it will make you better and stronger and smarter and faster and healthier than anything else. And most important, it will make you free. Guy's an extremely good writer. He majored in English. Um, and I don't know if it's perfectly English or English literature uh, while he was in the Navy. If you didn't know anything about him, he's a retired Navy SEAL commander, uh, SEAL Team 2. Bravo. Um, our task unit bruiser is what he changed the the name to. And by the way, I mean, I've got a couple of his favorite books here. Strategy, The Indirect Approach by B.H. Liddell Hart and About Face by Colonel David Hackworth. I didn't get the new copy uh, where Jocko did a foreword to that book, but I'll go ahead and collect that one at some point in the future. And we'll be reading that book. That'll be a big review. I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to just by the lessons that it had on such a guy like this. And it had that kind of an impact on him and made him a lot of who he is today where he learned about leadership, discipline. And, uh, you know, like what they say in that book, being a hardcore commando. I can only go so far as being a civilian myself. Um, but it's, it's important to learn. We've got these people here. We've got these books available standing on the shoulders of these giants to learn from. And I really appreciate it. So... This book has uh, an expanded edition, and I do have the copy of that one, but I haven't reread through it. So I imagine this will be a great thing to get a uh, to re up all of my discipline vocabulary and a lot of the great writing that Jocko Willings put together. Um, and that's what we've got, you guys. So I'm going to read the back of the extended uh, uh, the expanded edition to close this video out. So. We'll do that, and before I do that, discipline equals freedom. Probably get this copy, the expanded edition by Jocko Willink, and we'll close with this. There is no shortcut. 
There is no hack. There's only one way. So get after it. Conquer weakness. Procrastination and fear. Find your will. Find your discipline. And find your freedom.